Part 2, The Trip to the New Homeland Rudy is now eight years old. My uncle is on the other side of the mountain range, in the Ron River Valley. Please take me back to teach me to be a good person. My grandfather saw that it was beneficial for me so he agreed. So, Rudy was about to leave. Besides my grandfather, there were many other people who came to see me off. First of all, my father and number 39's old dog Ajola. He said, your father used to be a coachman, and I followed the carriage. We have gone up and down the mountain thousands of times, so I know the mass of people who died on the other side of the mountain. Now I don and number 39, T talk much anymore. But at 1 and number 39, T be long until we meet again, so I and number 39. LL talk a little more than usual. So, I want to ask you, why do I always have to be sad and always run next to the carriage? I don and number 39, T understand it either, and I don and number 39, T think you understand it either. In fact, it and number 39, s only now that I and number 39, they discovered that all the people in this world are not properly arranged for each dog or dog. Each person. Not all of us are born into this world to drink delicious milk and be picked up and cherished. I and number 39, am not used to living like that. But sometimes I see in carriages very naughty little dogs, occupying a seat like a passenger. Their owners feed them cookies and milk. They are so pampered that they have no appetite. They just licked the cake a little and then the hostess finished eating it. As for me, I was wading through the mud next to the car. My stomach was hungry. I could only think about how to eat. It and number 39, s a bunch of nonsense. But it and number 39, s over. I barked and yawned to signal that I was tired, but they never let me into the car, they never picked me up on their lap. I tell you all this so that you can learn and understand the life you are about to enter. And quat, that was the speech of the brave Ajola. Rudy hugged his neck and kissed his muzzle. After that, I wanted to hug him. Took the cat, but the cat looked offended, saying, you are much stronger than me now, and anyway I don and number 39. T want to use sharp claws to treat an old friend like you. You are about to climb. Through many mountains. You should remember the lessons I taught you. When you are up high, don and number 39. T think that you can fall, you will never fall. After saying that, my cat ran away to avoid being exposed. Eyes telling everyone how emotional it was to leave her dear friend. Two hens ran across the room. One of them had her tail docked. There was a tourist who thought he was a hunter, mistaking her for a, a wild bird shot her a shot that cut off her tail. She said, Rudy is about to go to the other side of the Alps. The other girl replied, I don and number 39, T like saying goodbye. Then they trotted away. On the contrary, the herd of goats that Rudy had been tending for so long sent her off fondly, bleeding in the saddest voice. Fortunately, there were two clever guides in the village who also crossed the Jemmy Snag Mountain on the other side. Rudy walked with them. It was a difficult trip for such a young child, but she was strong and her courage helped her overcome fatigue. The nightingale saw her off some distance and kept singing. And quat. V-O-O-C-E, O-O-I, O-O-I and quat. The path crosses the fast-flowing Luton stream, originating from the rocks. 
Rudy was very happy, as he tried to slam the heels of his nailed shoes on the ice. His eyes lit up with joy. After using her hands to hold on, she crawled over the ice blocks blocking the path, reaching a lake. She had to go around while avoiding falling into the abyss. At the mouth of a deep abyss, there is a large rock lying half out. When passing by, as soon as Rudy touched it, it immediately rolled down. It fell and crashed into deep mountain hollows, accompanied by a terrible crash that echoed far away. Right at that moment, Rudy suddenly remembered the story everyone had told him. My mother fell with me into one of those terrible and deadly cold ravines. But I was so bold that the thought did not make me tremble, but it immediately dissipated. I nimbly followed the two of them. Both of them occasionally wanted to help me climb difficult alleys, but I walked alone on the ice as steady and sure as a deer. Then they climbed to smooth, moss-free rocks, then descended a little, through a small, barren pine forest, until finally they reached the eternal snow. Never before had a baby climbed so high. Before my eyes is a vast sea of snow, with motionless waves. Occasionally the wind swirls snowflakes into whirlwinds just like the wind sweeps silver foam onto the ocean shore. Around, people see the mountains, young fro, moan, eggy, snow-capped peaks whose clouds do not reach the top. One glacier continues to the other. These are the resort castles of the goddess, a deity who only focuses on capturing and burying mortals. However, when the sun comes up it gets hot. The snow shines under the sunlight, blinding the eyes with thousands of white and blue diamonds. On the snow surface there were also the corpses of countless insects, bees and butterflies that had recklessly flown in or were blown away by the wind and died in the cold. Above Vedashuk Peak appeared a cloud of clouds that looked like a tangle of small, black wool. It rushed up quickly and swooped down heavily. That is a sign of the terrible storm Fawn, a storm that can overturn everything in the wind. Rudy was in and hash 39. T paying attention. He was still busy admiring the great landscape that was forever engraved in his memory. But the two people who were traveling together saw the danger. They quickly ran to an old stone inn that was set up to shelter pilgrims. There they had coal and pine branches. After lighting the fire, the two guides cooked a pot of strong and spicy medicine, which is very good at fighting fatigue. Rudy also has a part. The two of them sat around a fire, smoking and talking about mystical creatures in the alpine valleys, giant snakes that lived at the bottom of lakes, ghostly herds that swept sleeping passers-by on top of people. Savage shepherds tend flocks of black sheep far away on the heights. Those black sheep have never been seen but many times people have heard music and tragic cries. Rudy enjoyed listening to those stories and was not at all frightened. I Don and number 39. T know what fear is. Even when I heard a terrifying scream, I thought it was the sound of the black sheep that the guides had just told me about, but I was not startled. The noise came closer and closer, more intense. The two hunters stopped talking and told Rudy not to sleep so he could get ready. It was a storm, a very strong wind, rushing down from the top of the mountains into the valley, breaking the strongest trees like chopsticks, and sweeping away wooden houses from one side of the river to the other. The other side is as easy as moving a chess piece. The commotion lasted for an hour then gradually subsided. Two mountain people told Rudy that the storm was over and he could go to sleep. 
I and number 39, M. So tired and please do it now. The next morning they set out again. Overcoming many other mountains, many glaciers and new snowfields, they reached the Vale beyond the Alps. They saw the green of the forest again and soon saw people again. But what kind of person is that? The devils, small, pale-faced, yellow-skinned, each with a hideous step on their neck. Those are pitiful, stupid people, living a wandering, miserable life, staring blankly at passers-by. Especially women, they look even weirder. Are the people of Rudy and Number 39's new hometown like that? Read The Ice Goddess Part 3. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.